Hi everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another video. Today, I'm going to be covering a highly requested topic, and that is what painting surface should you use? So I'm just going to go over some of my favorite painting surfaces. I'm only going to talk about ones that I've actually personally used, so there are definitely more options out there available to you than just the ones I'm going to be talking about today, but I only wanted to mention the ones that I have real experience with so I can give a more honest and fair evaluation. So I'm going to start off today with probably the most popularly known oil painting surface and that is canvas. Canvases are usually a type of fabric, um, sometimes linen, sometimes cotton, it really depends, stretched over a wood frame and stapled in the back and then the fabric is usually primed with some sort of like either gesso or oil ground. And um, this canvas I'm holding right now is not a super good quality canvas. It's um, kind of in the value student discount section that you'll find in most art supply stores. But um, I have tried both good quality and bad quality canvases. There's definitely a noticeable difference. The higher quality canvases are stretched tighter, so there is a lot more resistance when you push. Um, with your brush. So for this one, I don't know if you can tell, but because it's slightly cheaper, it's really easy for me to kind of push down on the surface and see creating these little dents. It means that the fabric is kind of loose on the frame and it's able to be stretched and distorted. A higher quality, more expensive canvas will be stretched really tight. The wood frame will be more durable and probably thicker and heavier, and um, I think the surface of a higher quality canvas has a better texture. The lower quality ones, um, there's a really noticeable bumpy, gridded fabric texture, um, and I think that's because when they primed it, they didn't sand in between layers or you know, you know, even make more layers. So in the higher quality canvases, or if you're stretching your own canvas, I highly recommend um, several layers of gesso with a lot of sanding in between, and of course, a really durable wood frame and with the fabric stretched as tightly as possible. I have used canvases many times, um, especially earlier on when I was first learning how to oil paint. I made many paintings that I still to this day love and cherish on canvas, but um, lately, just personal preference, I have not used canvas in a while. Um, once I tried wood panels or uh, gesso boards, hard boards, I started loving that surface more. There's nothing against canvases. I think you know a high quality canvas probably costs around the same and probably will be just as durable as like a high quality wood panel. But I guess for me, my personal preference is um, something other than canvas because the absorbency rate of canvas isn't something I'm familiar with. Again, I think it's just personal preference, um, but I've noticed that canvases are less absorbent than wood or gesso board. So meaning the paint kind of takes longer to dry or get absorbed by the surface and I'm kind of just pushing paint around and accidentally mixing things together. But again, that's just more of a preference and a personal preference rather than a testament to like an objective quality because I think canvases and wood panels are equally awesome depending on which one you like more. Next up, we have one of my favorite painting surfaces and that is wood. So this one is a cradled birch wood panel. It's about one and three quarters inches deep and it's primed on the surface with oil ground, which is similar to acrylic gesso. Acrylic gesso is um, a more commonly used surface primer, but oil ground is tailored especially for oil paints and it makes your oils last a little longer and I've loved using it. To me, they feel very similar. Um, although I heard that they have different absorbency rates, but um, using acrylic and oil ground side by side, they both feel very, very familiar and comparable. So the thing I love most about wood panels, not only is it beautiful even from the back, and also it's got a really hard surface, so you don't have to worry during shipment about anything denting them or piercing through them. They're very, very sturdy. Um, but most of all, I just love how um, absorbent the surface is. So when I paint something, like if I do like an underpainting with a lot of paint thinner or a lot of um, fast drying mediums, it only takes a little bit of time for that layer to dry and for me to keep building. And it's just like the, it absorbs just enough. So it leaves enough um, on the surface for me to still blend and work with, but also absorbs fast enough that I can work in between layers. Um, 
that being said, again, it's not that this absorbency rate is superior to a, you know, a slower absorbency rate or a faster absorbency rate. This is just the one that I'm most familiar with and it just happens to be my personal favorite um, due to no other reason than it being my favorite. My favorite painting surface of all time is probably hardboard. Um, you can find them in different brands. So Ampersand makes one called Gesso Board, which is basically their own hardboard primed with acrylic gesso. Um, with Treckle, you can find different primers for a very similar board. Um, this one is primed with oil ground, which as I explained earlier, is great for um, catering to oil paint. And the thing I love most about hardboard is how smooth the surface is. So a main difference between hardboard and wood, for example, is if you can see the back here. So these are the two hardboard backs, and this is the back of the wood. The wood panels are obviously made with one sheet of regular wood. Um, birch is kind of my preference for wood panels because it's a very durable and smooth textured wood. But hardboard is basically, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm just going to explain it in very simple terms, but basically compressed wood fibers that have been compressed to be so dense that they're super, super durable, super hard to bend, hard to warp, um, they don't crack. They're very, very compressed, hard, smooth surfaces. So there aren't any wood grains on the surface. It's going to be pretty much completely smooth, almost glass-like. I mean, not, not like as smooth as glass. There's a little bit of texture, but it's pretty much unnoticeable. And I just love gesso boards and hard boards because when I scan the paintings that I make with them, it almost looks digital because you can't see any textures or grains or, you know, like fabric um, patterns on the surface. So it almost feels like you're painting on a digital surface. And also I like that they're usually pretty thin. They come in about one eighth thickness and that's perfect for framing for me because I don't have to worry about the piece jetting out from the back and there's just a larger variety of frames that I can use for my finished pieces. So yeah, Gesso Board is a brand that I used to use a lot. It's um, by Ampersand and now I have started using the Trickle Hardboard which is basically the same except Trickle offers an oil ground option um, and since I pretty much exclusively paint with oil colors, it's just a lot more catered and perfected for oil paints. So yeah, this is absolutely my favorite type of surface to paint on. This next surface is not super well known for oil painting. It is called vellum. You guys might have heard of it before. Um, it's actually suitable for many different mediums, not just oil paints. Um, I think it's good with ink, with pencil. And I see this actually used a lot in architecture classes because there's like a slight transparency to the paper. So it's ideal for tracing. Um, sometimes it's also used in like arts and crafts. So very multifunctional type of surface. But I first saw vellum being used in an oil painting atelier, which is basically like a private fine art school. I saw it being used by oil painting students when they were doing studies, still lifes, when they're practicing, when they were drawing from like, uh, you know, an actual live model. Um, they just kind of taped this to their boards and painted on them. And I thought that was so interesting. I've never seen like something like this being used for oil painting before, but upon doing research, actually quite a lot of artists um, use oil paint or use vellum as their oil painting surface. And interesting fact, vellum used to be made out of animal skin, which I would definitely not use if they did that today. But nowadays it's made out of wood pulp and cotton. So it's just like a paper basically. And the great thing about vellum, obviously, number one is the cost. You can get a huge pad of it for, you know, a decent price. You don't have to pay for individual panels, you know, like gesso boards, wood panels, canvases can cost several dollars even into the double digits per piece and this one you can get a pad and, and just keep practicing also it's super super smooth i mean this is like one of the smoothest papers you'll ever see it's, it almost feels like a parchment paper so it doesn't really absorb the oil paint and it you know it works pretty well i've done a few pieces on vellum in the past and they've all lasted pretty long um, the one thing you have to get used to is the surface not being super absorbent. 
um, at least again, the absorbency thing, it's like what you're used to and what works for you. So for me, I feel like this wasn't absorbent enough for someone else. They might feel like it's perfect. Um, but for me, at least compared to wood and hardboard, which have a, an absorbency rate that I prefer, um, this one leaves the paint on the surface too much and I end up kind of pushing paint around, similar to kind of my thoughts on canvas. Um, but yeah, overall, you should, guys should totally give this a try. It's really um, interesting and unique and again, very cost effective, especially if you're just practicing, there's really no point in buying something super expensive. Okay, now that we've talked about what each different surface is made of, how it feels and what I like and dislike about each, let's talk about the prices. So there's a huge range of prices and I think as important as it is to find a surface that really suits your needs as an artist, um, it's also important to pay attention to the price point because you don't want to be emptying your wallet when it's not really the right situation to do so. Um, the most affordable one from my research has been, of course, the vellum, which you can get a pack of about 50 sheets for about $20 or less. So um, obviously with canvas as well, you can get canvas pads. So I don't really have one on hand, but I know that they, there's many different brands. I think Strathmore sells one that sells a pad much like this, where um, each sheet is like a unstretched piece of canvas. But um, yeah, out of all the ones I talked about today, the vellum is the most affordable. And usually the pads are around nine by 12 size, which I think is a comfortable size for, especially for studies and for portraits. Um, this canvas was a value pack from Artist Loft brand, um, which you, you can get at Michael's. It's like a very affordable value brand. I don't really recommend canvases like this if you're going to be doing like a gallery show or, you know, a commission for an important client because, like I said before, they're not the best quality, but they are a really good price point. You can get a pack of seven, I think last time I checked at Michael's, they were about $20 or less. Sometimes they go on sale for like 15 bucks for a pack of seven. So you're looking at around just over $2 per canvas. And um, these are 12 by 12. So definitely there are cheap and expensive versions of canvases. I've seen a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, if it's artist grade and really, really good quality, I think from a brand called Fredericks, um, I've seen them go up as high as $20 for, for one canvas. So when you are looking at high quality materials, it's definitely comparable to wood and other surfaces. But for the value versions, um, there are definitely cheaper options available. So gesso boards and hard boards, which are basically both hard boards, um, pre-primed, they are very similar in price. This treckle board here is slightly more expensive. It's around $10 for an 11 by 14, I think 9.50-ish, so $9.50 for an 11 by 14 oil ground um, hardboard. And then the Ampersand brand, which is primed with acrylic gesso instead of oil ground, um, is around $8 or so. So still very similar. Um, the oil ground, of course, costs a little bit more because it's a higher quality product for oil paints. Um, but yeah, these typically, I would say it's pretty pricey, especially given how thin they are. So they can't be hung up or displayed on their own. You'll need to frame them, unlike the cradled wood panels or the canvases that have like a, a mechanism to just hang them up as is. So for something 1 8 inch, these are definitely a little bit more costly, but in my opinion, they are worth the price because they are simply just such a perfect type of surface to work on. I can't stress this enough how much I favor them. Um, yeah, so the hardboards run about I would say eight to ten dollars for an 11 by 14. As for the wood panels, there are different price points depending on the thickness of the wood and also of course what it's primed with. So the wood panel you saw earlier, that's 12 by 12. Um, it's one of the deepest cradled panels at about one and three quarters, so almost two inches deep. And also it has the luxurious oil ground as the primer. So this one runs about $20 for a 12 by 12, which is kind of steep, but it is like definitely a gallery quality, very durable, very luxurious surface to paint on. And of course it's got this beautiful thick cradled back. Um, you can definitely find more affordable options. So this um, 
one fourth inch. It's also birch surface and also oil ground, but it doesn't have the cradled back, so it's just like a flat wood board. This one is very similar to the price of the hardboard and gesso board. So I think the hardboard, I believe, was around $9.50, and the wood is about like $8.80. Um, so yeah, pretty much almost the, the same price, depending on which surface you like. Again, I prefer the hardboard because it has a perfectly smooth surface, but if you like a little bit of natural wood grain, or in some cases the wood is actually really smooth as well, and in some cases, honestly, it's nice to have a little wood grain, um, these two are about similar price points for an 11 by 14. This is a 16 by 20 cradled panel. It's only one inch thick, so it's about half a little over half of the size of the 12 by 12, which is one and a quarter or one and three quarters inches thick. So you can see the comparison here. Um, the one inch cradle panel is more affordable, but because this is bigger, this is a 16 by 20. Um, it's also primed with oil ground. So same as a 12 by 12. This one is about $32. And um, I think that's actually a pretty good price given how big the surface is. And yeah, for me, like I said before, it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, for my solo show, I'm using slightly more costly materials and surfaces because I want them to be durable, I want them to look perfect, I want people who buy them to not have any problems when they're packaging or shipping them. And honestly, they're my preferred surface to paint on, so it's more enjoyable for me to paint on them. But if you're just starting out and just practicing and not even looking to sell, you know, there's really no point in paying almost $10 for one surface, unless you can afford it, in which case, buy whatever you like. Um, but yeah, if you're just a student or you're not working or you can't afford it, there's nothing wrong with going for a more affordable alternative. The one instance where I do think it is important to splurge and invest a lot is when you are doing a professional gallery show, or I guess um, in a similar vein, if you're going to sell your painting to a client, whether it's a commission, whether you're selling through a gallery or selling an original. Um, if you paint something that you intend on selling, I think it's important to invest a little bit of extra money in making sure that the piece has longevity. And real quick before I leave, I just wanted to thank Trickle.com for letting me use some of the best painting surfaces I've ever tried, whether it's their cradled birch panels or their hardboards or their um, wood panels that aren't cradled. I have loved every single surface I've used from Trickle and I highly recommend them. And in case you were worried about the cost, they were kind enough to give me and my viewers a special discount code. So if you want to try any of these out for yourself for 15% off, just use the code HAPPYD at trickle.com. And I'll leave the information in the description and on the screen so you guys can um, check it out later. But yeah, thank you Trickle so much for the awesome supplies and for the discount. And lastly, I just want you guys to remember that no matter what materials you use, no matter how expensive or affordable they are, I think ultimately what defines you as an artist and what's the most important is your skills and how you use the materials you have. You know, having the most expensive and fanciest art supplies won't automatically make you a better artist. Although, you know, higher quality art supplies definitely help and they're definitely, in my opinion, um, more appropriate and more necessary when you're intending on selling your pieces because you want to make sure your customer gets a high quality product. Um, but even if you have cheap art materials that you practice with, it doesn't mean you're a worse artist and it won't make you a worse artist. Um, in fact, so many artists I know, including myself, will practice on more affordable, more valuable materials. And then when it comes time to make pieces for shows or for clients, for commissions, um, we use the higher quality ones. So yeah, I just want to make sure you guys know that there's nothing wrong and there's no shame in whatever type of art material you guys decide to use. Ultimately, what's more important is that you practice, practice, practice. Alrighty guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe so I can share more art with you guys. And I hope you have a lovely day or evening wherever you are and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye!